But welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We have one of our favorites, Anthony A. Dix Jr. back on. Welcome back, Anthony. Well, thank you so very much for having me today. I'm really excited about our impending conversation. And uh, still, as you said, just a little bit silly for my last conversation, but uh, thank you so very much for having me. And I'm so glad that there's more to this team now. So the more the merrier. Can't wait to engage Sherry in a conversation as well about our topic today. So thank you. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's really um, and amazing. And Sherry mentioned, you know, she's interviewed your wife. And yes. so it's I, the two of you are very different in a lot of ways, <laughs> which is super cool. You know, one thing that's not different for us is that every day we have these amazing sponsors and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, your part-time controller, 180 Management Group, where Anthony joins us from, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. We have this amazing and super cool co-host panel that we've developed they come from all over the country. Today, I'm joined by Sherry Quam Taylor of Quam Taylor. Miss Sherry, tell us where you come from, because I think that's very exciting. Well, I'm, I'm dialing in from Chicago today, where we had a cool and rainy uh, holiday weekend, but uh, only, only onward and upward from here. I love it. I love it. Well, we are thrilled um, to have you on. You know, I was thinking about this, Sherry. I think you were kind of like one of the very first guests that we had on the nonprofit show. Really? Yeah, when we first started, and I somehow found you, and I think probably through LinkedIn, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'm on and, there a lot. <laughs> yeah, and so um, super cool that, you know, five years later, we would still have you. Wow, um, incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Anthony A. Dix, Jr., Senior Leadership Consultant from 180 Management Group, I think we should add in there guru. Oh, wow. In the show um, notes. I don't receive that, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad this is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. Well, I want to witness to everybody and I've, I've thought about this and I wasn't going to do it, but um, I am going to do it. And I'm going to witness to everyone that um, we had you on months and months and months ago, maybe even mm -hmm. last year, I can't remember. And um, I was so inspired with what you said, your cadence, I totally drank the Kool-Aid. And I called you up and I said, I need some coaching. And while I do executive coaching, um, uh, and work with in a fixer capacity for for leaders, I just felt like you could bring something to my life where I was struggling. And specifically, that was with my goals, how I set them, how I managed them, and how, spoiler alert, I never achieved them. <laughs> and then I started working with you, and holy crap, I started achieving these goals, like, right at the beginning of the year, as wow. opposed to never achieving them. What say you? Am I just a good student? Exceptional. Now, that's <laughs> that goes without saying, and that's no hyperbole there. You're an exceptional uh, leader, an exceptional executive, an exceptional professional, really just an exceptional person. You already know that. I've told you in times past that uh, you're a star. I might be the sky, but you you are the star and it's your job to shine ebulliently. Um, so I've, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to serve as your coach. I'm kind of elated. Well, I'm kind of surprised that you're sharing this like public, 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 because, you know, coaching know has too. this confidentiality thing going on with it. But um, I'm, I'm really, really honored that you gave me the opportunity to join your leadership journey and really serve as a catalyst and an accelerant to your accomplishment. Um, but uh, the secret sauce is really you. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm just there to help guide. You know, it's it's been magical. And I think that um, that's kind of why I, I'm always so interested in what you have to say. And um, I know that Sherry, like I said earlier, has has been involved with Miriam and interviewed her. And um, I, I've interviewed Miriam once. I find you to be very different. And that's not bad. It's just fascinating to me. Um, and so, um, again, I just am super excited to to be able to share with everybody that watches and listens to us 
but I have a different perspective when it comes to what you have to say. And um, I guess I pay attention. <laughs> You're an A plus student. That's good. Yep. <laughs> oh God, sister, I've never been an A plus student. Oh my goodness. To hear that, that's an amazing thing. Well, Anthony, let's get to it. And you want to advise us to be aware of the nine part sound system. What in the heck is that? So Julia, you and I have talked about this year. I'm gonna give you a little access into my life. So um, no pun intended, but I'm the son of a preacher man. Yeah. And I'm that's literal. I'm I'm a PK. And in my time serving my dad uh in church and churches, I've had to man the sound system. And uh, it, it's a pretty stressful job because the, the pastor's not going to get heard if I'm not doing my job. And I've learned a lot about sound. And I did that as a child and a little bit as an adult. And I've also had the opportunity to learn a significant amount about, about marketing um, through uh, some other certifications that I have. I still engage in that marketing space and provide a significant amount of coaching to, to chief marketing officers, marketing directors, and things of the like in the nonprofit space. And I've learned that a whole lot of marketing is like managing a sound system. First, you want to overcome the noise that's already in the market. Uh, but in order to do that, you need yeah. a sound system. And by sound system, I just don't mean the mixer. Mm -hmm. I mean a system that is sound and, and how you generate your messages, how you uh, release those messages, how you manage those messages really contribute to how it is you amplify that message. And a nine-part sound system or a nine-part marketing system that is sound involves a compelling story framework, a sound board, a sounding board. And I mean that in two senses, a sound mixer, but also, you know, how if you're bouncing ideas off of somebody, you want to bounce those, eyes, those ideas off of a sounding board. Mm -hmm. You've got amplifiers. Uh, anytime you got sound like this microphone that I have, it has its own amplification system within it. Now, if it was another sure microphone, it would need some type of cloud producer to amplify it and power it. But this one particularly has its own power and amplifying system. So you need amplifiers. You also need an equalizer, especially for those that are in the nonprofit space who may not have the marketing spin that other corporations do. You need something to equalize it, to equalize that market. You also need speakers. You got to give people a call sign. Now, I don't know, Sherry, you may not know this, but I'm, you're in Chicago, so you might know a little bit about this. <laughs> Cincinnati is somewhere Lead close to me. the Rust Belt, I think. <laughs> Do you remember um, WKRP in Cincinnati? Do you remember that? Oh, right. Yeah. So that call sign, the WKRP, I, I, I like that to a radio signal. And whenever you're doing marketing, you need a call to action, something that is memorable, that moves people to do something. So you, you need a call sign or you got to get people to act. You also need a way to receive feedback. When you are speaking externally, and I know, Julie, you do an extensive amount of speaking, if you've got that lavalier on and you get a little bit too close to that monitor, it can give you feedback. That feedback tells you a lot about how you sound. So in your marketing framework or system, you need a way to receive feedback and make those adjustments using your equalizer or maybe spacing out your uh, speakers just a little bit different. You also need a sound system that has a lot of outputs and inputs, and you need some connections. So you can't have a, a sound without connections. I've got something connecting this microphone so that I've got an input and output device to this computer. And that's the nine parts of a marketing sound system that if you employ it right and you've got some good sound engineers, you can amplify your message. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know I was getting a technology lesson as well today, but <laughs> uh, I also feel like Anthony, um, I love everything you just said. And I'd, I'd be curious to know also just the, I feel like it's then, and then do all that consistent, consistently, right? Mm -hmm. It's where it's not the up and down, or we're just going to do one broadcast uh, to, to, to add on to that. But I just feel like consistent consistency has been time and time for me, 
um, what's also been so important, maybe laying on top of everything you just said. Exactly. Consistency alludes to, from a sound perspective, the idea of frequency. Mm. Sound is transmitted through a frequency, uh, hertz. And so we know frequency of not only the wavelengths uh, when yes. it comes to sound, but also about timing, timing. So frequency and consistency are related with regards to timing. So if you are not consistent, if you don't have the necessary frequency to certain messages, you could be, um, I'll give you an example. Right now, there are tons of you in a car, you're on your satellite, there are tons of radio stations going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. The reason why you hear one and not the other is because you're tuned in to a particular frequency. And organizations need to know what frequency their listeners, their audiences are tuned into and try to match that frequency, number one, and then do it consistently enough to create an expectation because now I know when my favorite program comes on that frequency Yeah, because it's consistent. Uh, and your social media channels can kind of operate almost like a broadcast network, like this, this the nonprofit show. Everybody knows when it's going to broadcast. It's going to broadcast every day. It's going to broadcast on YouTube. YouTube is a huge educational device, an educational platform. So understanding that channel, which is an amplifier, understanding your frequency every day at this time creates the necessary uh, atmosphere and network for people to hear you over the other noise that may be going on in the market. Right. You know, I, I love that because I think it kind of narrows it down. It makes it more achievable. Um, you can't be all things to all people. And the first thing you started us off with was you talked about having a framework for powerful leadership. And so what does that mean to you? And can we start all this other stuff or do we need to start here? You need to start with the story. Okay. That there's nothing to transmit if you don't have any content. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you got to figure out what you're going to say first. And then from what you're going to say, determine the best ways in which to go about amplifying that message. Without a message, there's nothing to amplify. Mm -hmm. And the most uh, compelling thing for humanity, two things really that are quite compelling, they invade your space almost without you ever giving it permission. That's mm. music and story. Mm. Music has a way of just penetrating your mind or your soul without your permission. You could be listening to it and you just start well, yeah. either bobbing your head or moving your butt because it's just rhythmic. When it comes to story, story is the same way. I don't know if y'all ever watched uh, how y'all in uh, y'all might or might not be into uh, Ben Affleck. He's got this wonderful movie. Well, I can't call it wonderful it's a movie it's a good movie it's the accountant have you all have either of you all yeah. seen that no great really? great film yes i don't want to be a spoiler alert, but ben affleck does a wonderful job of playing someone who is, who has autism. autism and one of the challenges that he has is he loves to finish like if you don't give him an opportunity to finish he does not function appropriately he's sociable but he can't function appropriately and one thing that, that story always compels you to do is if you hear the beginning of it it compels you to like okay you can't just stop right there right right if i told you the story of a man who went out to go feed his family and while he was trying to go out to feed his family in the old days of of the west before it was really settled he had one bullet and one gun he had to feed them. So he went out to go feed his family. And when he was going out to feed his family, he saw a huge deer. He put his sights on the deer. And before he could shoot the deer, he heard a big bird above his head. It was the biggest bird that he had ever seen. But before he could shoot the bird, he heard <laughs> between his feet. Now, if I stop the story right there, <laughs> you don't want to know how that story ends. Right. 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 That's how story compels the human brain. And in a story, you need a hero. This is the framework. You need a hero, mm -hmm. right? The man going out to feed his family. That's the hero. You also need an obstacle. He's got to feed his family. But that obstacle has to be almost overwhelming. It's got to be something that causes it to have stakes. You just can't 
have I need to go feed my family and there's a grocery store right down the street. No, there's need there needs to be a little bit of scarcity. Uh, there's need to be a, a little bit of intensity and suspense. But you also have to have a plan. How is he going to overcome this obstacle? And then eventually you need what I call the happily ever after. So with the hero, an obstacle or opportunity, a plan and happily ever after, hero, obstacle, plan, ever, hero, obstacle, plan, ever, you have H-O-P-E, hope. So a hopeful storyline in your marketing will help you to uh, leverage the sound system appropriately. Mm. So that's that's the framework that I think uh, will help many people. Uh, if they think about it that way, how are we providing our donors? How are we providing the people that we serve? How are we providing them hope? How are we providing heroes overcoming impossible obstacles because they had implemented a plan and it led them to a life that's happily ever after. So good. I love that that's rooted in positivity. Like, yes. of course, they're overcoming perhaps a crisis or mm -hmm. something that was of, of, at no fault of their own often. But I love the starting with the positive spin and the um, we can all link arms for something better. Uh, I love right. that rooted in that hope. Uh, it exactly. kind of starts with that. Exactly. And I think you can make an argument, Anthony, that the hero can be the donor. The donor yes. becomes, you know, a heroic part mm -hmm. of a solution, you know, of that, of that piece and that journey. Exactly. I think that's really magical because people want to be engaged in something that, as you said, it's fascinating. You said this, but a happily ever after. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. And especially in so many of the lanes in which nonprofit organizations have missions because so much of what nonprofit organizations do involves overcoming some obstacle that is, for no better word, is traumatic, mm -hmm. right? Or tragic. So to create a sense of hope amid tragedy and adversity uh, sets those messages apart from others. And it also, I think, empowers people to act. Yes. That there are things you can do to turn this nightmare into a, a dream, to turn this tragedy into triumph. And you can do that with hope. Yeah. Well, let's drill down on that because a little bit more, because, you know, we go by the number 1.8 million registered nonprofits in the U.S. Mm -hmm. That's mm. a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so how do we get our messages heard when there's so much out there? There's and you could say they're all doing, you know, the work of the angels. They're all good. But what do we do? How how do we get through that noise? One, we kind of alluded to a little bit earlier, and that is frequency. There are a lot of different messages going on in the marketplace and space simultaneously. And the one that gets heard is the frequency to which the people you are talking to are tuned into. So really assessing where your audience is already listening to messages and making sure that you can show up there. If the majority of your donors are of a certain age and of a certain demographic, and that age and demographic does not spend a lot of time on Facebook or any other social media platform, then maybe your message shouldn't be promulgated or promoted on those channels. Mm -hmm. Those channels, though they may amplify the message of another organization, they're not going to amplify yours. Mm -hmm. So learning where your audience is really tuned in already uh, with ease of use is one way to be heard over other messages. But the big thing, and this is something that I learned while I was manning the soundboard at several different churches and um, building building certain soundboards and, and others. And that is when it comes to frequency, the lower frequencies aren't what you hear first. If you wanna get people to listen to you on that equalizer I told you about, mm -hmm. you want to turn up the highs. 
So in the human voice, the human voice already carries this low frequency. You can take some of the lows out of the human voice. You can manipulate some of the mids and some, you know, people have this thing on the soundboard called a sweepable mid. But you, if you accentuate the highs, the highs create the feeling that is louder when that's not really what's going on. What we perceive as louder or amplified when you turn up the highs, it just made the voice clearer. Mm. So in order to amplify your message, you want to make sure that that message is clear mm -hmm. because you will hear clarity before you hear noise. For those of you who are listening, you know anything about videography, you know that there are some uh, pictures uh, that are cast or published to broadcast and they say that in that picture there's a lot of noise mm -hmm. there's a lot of static in the background there's a lot of noise and so to take that noise out what do they do they bring clarity so if you want to amplify your message you need that sound system or you need a great story framework but you also need to make sure that the messages you are promoting are clear mm -hmm. because the clear message overcomes all of the noise not the one that is the uh, the cleverest, not the one that is the pithiest, not the one that is the most trendy, the one that is most clear. So good. Anthony, a lot of people uh, come to me and say, uh, it's hard, so I, I, I do fundraising, uh, and they say it's hard for us to raise funds because it's too competitive. There's too many of us, or, mm -hmm. or you know, we're doing something science-y, we're not feeding starving children, so it's way easier. Uh, I, I never let them have that excuse, but mm -hmm. what I love and I'm hearing from you is you actually have control over your message and your frequency mm -hmm. and your clarity, and um if you take the time and, and use all those parts of your soundboard um, mm -hmm. to, to find that exact frequency that, that those people say, I want to give to you, you, you are my heartbeat versus feeding children. We all, right. we all want to do that. But, but I, I'd be curious to know um, if I'm giving them the, the correct advice, but, but if you, if you really feel like these nine parts or the storytelling aspect really can overcome any of those competitive thoughts we have in the sector. That's yes. A great question. I love that question, Sherry. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I give an example. And I, I I hope I'm not dating myself, but if you're looking, you can see I got a little gray hair here. We could be I think outside. you're very young, Anthony. Oh, very God. young. <laughs> we, we could be outside when I was growing up making a lot of noise, just all kinds of noise, just all just doing playing basketball, riding a bike, having something outside is playing music. But if we heard the soft bells of an ice cream truck, <laughs> it just, out of all of the other competing sounds, we heard that sound mm -hmm. Why? because we have been trained that when you hear that, something you desire is close. Something you really want is close. Do I, I want to play? Yes. Do I want to be out here with my friends? Yes. But what I really want is ice cream. And, and if we could find as nonprofit directors of marketing, chief marketing officers, public relations professionals, if you could find really drill down on what your nonprofit provides to find out what's at its heart, what's at its heart beyond the science, beyond what's really at the heart of it, what's really moving people, you will have found something that no other organization can compete with. Good even if they're doing something in the similar lane, your organization is idiosyncratic. Even if you're trying to offer the same thing, got similar mission as others, no one organization is a direct identical twin of another. You all give something unique. And if you can drill down on that thing, you, you can find the frequency that uh, can increase so your donations, can do a whole lot of things. So Sherry, we don't have a lot of time left, but how do you, what do you think about that? And how do you think you can articulate that back to the folks that you work with? Because a lot of people probably never heard this. Yeah, I, I love that. Like, I don't know how you said it, Anthony, but it's like, the, what is the the heart, right? Like the, at the root of it. Um, you know, I think oftentimes what I'm finding is organizations are maybe talking very internal or, uh, you know, they're listing the 412 things that they do. And sometimes I'm like, but why? 
why should somebody give to that? Why? Mm -hmm. So I'm always asking, you know, why would I give my money to you over somebody else? Which I think maybe is like, why are you hearing the ice cream truck over all the other, uh, you know, sounds that are going on in the playground? And so it's, I think it's sometimes it's like removing what's irrelevant, um, really making sure you are on that frequency that attracts donors and, and gets to the heart of it and um, simplifying the message almost. Exactly. And that why question is paramount because that's where the differentiation comes in. When it comes to marketing messages, the differentiation is not in the what, it's in the why. Mm -hmm. Because that's what really gets closer to moving people. Uh, and if you can help facilitate an organization finding out their why, their raison d'etre, their reason for being, that will empower them to form and formulate compelling and clear marketing messages that they can leverage on any platform or, or wherever their audience is already listening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, so everybody see why I called him the guru? <laughs> Well, we've got a guru with us today. I can tell. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, really, I just I love your approach, Anthony. I think um, you say things in a, in a beautiful way. Your phraseology and the way you you kind of introduce a concept that maybe we think we know or we should know, or mm -hmm. but we don't take the time to to reassert it and maybe frame it back the way it makes sense for our, ourselves and our organizations. And so thank you. Anthony A. Dix, Jr., Senior Leadership Consultant, 180 Management Group. He, check out 180managementgroup.com and you can learn about where, what they do, their work. Um, Anthony and, and Miriam Dix, they travel all over the country. They do a lot of speaking. Miriam was at uh, Bloomerang's event last month. Um, well, actually, no, not last month. It was the very beginning of the month <laughs> in San Diego. Um, and so really a cool um, alignment for us on the nonprofit show to have met you both and to learn Thank about you. your work and your approach. It's really, really a uh, just so invaluable. And, and I love what you had to say today. I think this is important, Sherry, also because I think this is the time that things can be, this concept can be approached and discussed before we get into the fall and the holiday mm -hmm. season and all that, when you can't make changes, you can't yep. pivot because you've secured everything, even if you've just secured it mentally, right? Yeah. I think so, you lock yourself in a conference room and listen to this and, and take that time to really ask the, what do they say? The seven whys get to the root of it before that copy is finalized. Yeah. Really, really empowerful. Uh, again, we are also empowered by our presenting sponsors and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Okay, Sherry, I'm like totally jazzed and excited about reformulating some, uh, even my own ideas. Okay. Yeah. I, I can't wait to hear. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. And, and I think that, um, Anthony, before we let you go, I think sometimes we get fatigued by what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so we think, oh, well, we have to change it up versus drilling down and even narrow casting it more. Do you see that as we let you go? And I know it's like, that's a big question <laughs> at the end of the show, but. Yes, I think sometimes in the rhythm of the market, both on the nonprofit side and for-profit side, we are almost seduced into changing things too quickly mm. when we should take a little bit of time and allow it to resonate to watch certain things unfold before we make adjustments. Uh, and finding, as, as Sherry said, finding out that why really gives an organization its secret sauce because that why is, is a driver, it's a transmission, and it really gives you a rooting and a patience so that while other things seem to be fluctuating in the market, you can maintain your core values and make adjustments at the appropriate time. One of the best things about music is timing. Mm -hmm. 
When do I hit the snare? When do I give the hi-hat a little bit more? When I hit the kick? Uh, when do I play these chords? And uh, I, I would encourage anyone who's listening, don't be seduced by the speed of marketing to make adjustments too soon. Give your marketing campaign some time. Then go back and reevaluate. Mm -hmm. I love good it. Good advice. Super good advice. Good advice. Walk before you run. That's exactly. Great. Exactly. <laughs> Well, everybody, as we end another episode of the Nonprofit Show, I want to give our gratitude to our wonderful, wonderful co-host and our guest, of course, today. But I also want to remind everyone, as we do at the end of every show, and that is to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here again next time on the Nonprofit Show. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Awesome, Anthony. Great to meet you.